Gaming Division. Salutations! I am Camera Ryan. Welcome to Gaming Division. This is an unboxing for Pandemic on the Brink. Dun dun dun! Yeah. So this has uh, this is an expansion to the new uh, Pandemic series, or the newer one, rather, not the new one, but. Um, this one in particular has um, a fifth disease and a bioterror, so it actually has a traitor mechanic to it. Uh, of course, there's going to be new roles. This says seven new roles and eight new events. Um, I'm not sure how they mix in together, if I'm being honest. Let's get that new box pop. Almost. It stuck a little bit more than I wanted it to. Uh, of course, we have a new rule book. Oh, dear. What are those? Lots of red. But again, very short. They're good at doing their layouts and keeping it brief. Um... Oh, my. They really do have... Seven new rolls. Uh, I'll go through those when I get to the cards. Wow. Um, I don't know what this is. These are like stickers of some kind. That what's happening here? Uh, that go, look like they go on petri dishes, but I don't have petri dishes yet. Unless oh, this is the one that comes with the petri dishes. I thought it was another one. Um, so this is actually a fun way to uh, store things, and it comes with five of them. Because, of course, we have a new disease. Um, it also came with... I, I don't know what this is. It's labeled as Bioterrorist Location Sheet. But, I don't know. Let me go ahead and lay out a couple things here. So you can see <laughs> what, what's going on. Um, dun, dun, dun. A little crooked. And just one small pack of cards, uh, and then a baggie of things. Um, so it looks like some these overlays are for the board uh, from the from the main game, and that you're supposed to uh, add the new pieces to that. So let me. Okay, so no new things on the action card. They just included one more for whatever reason. Uh, we've got the roll cards, which I'll come back to. Oh, those are special. Okay, then we've got new event cards. Uh, I probably should go ahead and read these real quick. Um, real real quick. Uh, oh, jeez. Okay, so... Let me do the more interesting one first. Of course, we have the standard Epidemic card. Uh, I don't know if they include that just there as a replacement, or if maybe they wanted you to know what it was for reference for these. Um, the Epidemic uh, Viral Strain, uh, which is very interesting. Um, if, one, if the Violent Strain has not been cured, you need one more Violent Strain City card to discover a cure for it. Otherwise, ignore this effect. Um, wow. And there are eight of those cards, so I'm not even sure what the rules are. We'll check those up in a minute. Um, we've got a mutation card for... Uh, if the purple disease is not eradicated, draw a card from the bottom of the infection deck. Place one purple disease cube only on this city. Discard the card drawn and draw... And this card can to discard the card drawn and this card to the infection discard pile. If the purple disease is eradicated, just discard this card. In both cases, this counts as one infection card draw. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm assuming that has to deal with the fifth uh, disease um, that can't be cured. Um, mutation event. The mutation... Threatens. Play it once, not in action. If the purple disease is not eradicated, draw a card from the bottom of the infection deck, place three purple disease cubes only on this city. Discard that card to the infection discard pile. Uh, 
Um, and then, for whatever reason, Purple Cure Indicator. You may use this card instead of using the sticker to indicate where the Purple Cure marker goes. Which is actually a really cute option that they did for us. I'm really happy that we, we got that. Um, so apparently there's a whole rule mechanic I've got to investigate there, and that's fine because the pur- because the purple disease actually sounds super interesting. Um, let, real quick, let's go through the uh, the new event cards. Uh, commercial travel ban. The infection rate is one until the current player's next turn begins. Put this card in front of this player. Discard it when it is his next turn. Uh, special orders. Play at any time on action this turn. The player may spend actions to move. One other pawn with permission as if it was his own. So that's, you get the dispatcher power for um, one turn. Rapid vaccine deployment. Play immediately after discover a cure action to remove one to five cubes of the cured disease. These disease cubes must come from connected cities. So you can't just do it all over the world. You've got to do a big patch. That makes sense. Uh, Mobile hospital. This turn, remove one disease cube from each city the player drives or ferries to. So you've got like a mini medic power. Um, new assignment. Select a player. This player may swap his roll card with any one of the unused rolls. That could actually be very powerful because look, being able to look at the situation and select the roll that you need for it, that's pretty nice. And then if you've got the contingency planner, you can do it twice. Um, borrow time. Take two extra actions this turn. I like that one. Uh, Re-examined research. Select a player. This player may draw any one city card from the player discard pile into his hand, discarding if over his hand limit. Okay, so if you need a certain color, you can get it from the discard pile. Remote treatment. Remove two disease cubes from the board. Oh, they! I love, I love when games do this. You get two blank event cards. This is amazing. I really think that this is something that makes games special, and I can't wait to really dig down and see what becomes good of it. Um, Likewise, they give you two blank roll cards as well. Uh, Super excited that that oh that they they did this, and they even know what camera to look at. Okay, so real quick, again, seven new rolls, which kind of blows this game up a little bit, but. I like uh, variety in my games. Um, your hand limited uh, archivist. Your hand limit is eight cards instead of normally seven. Once per turn, as an action, you may take the city card that matches the city you are in from the player discard pile into your hand. Oh, so you can actually dig in the discards. That's that's pretty nice. Containment specialist. When you enter a city with two or more disease cubes of the same color, remove one of them. Okay, so it's an, a mini medic power as well. So he gets the, like, Jesus Walk light, essentially. Uh, Epidemiologist. Once during your turn, you may, with permission, take any city card from a player in the same city with you. Doing this is not an action. So you can do that with with no action. It's kind of the researcher. um, Oh, no, you can take. So it's the researcher roll, but it doesn't cost anything, and you would have to be the taker. Okay, it's it's different. Field operative. Once per turn, as an action, you may move one disease cube from the city you are in onto this roll card. Ooh. When you discover a cure, you may replace two of the needed city cards with three cubes of the cure color from this card. Oh, wow. So... Wait, what? <laughs> Maybe I don't understand that. I'm going to come back to that. Uh, generalist. Uh, you may do up to five actions each turn. That's that's pretty good. I like consistent abilities. Um, troubleshooter. Start your turn by looking at as many infection cards as the current infection rate. Oh, start your turn. So she gets to peak every time. Um, when you do a direct flight, reveal the city card used, but do not discard it. That's pretty nice. Uh, Bioterrorist, use only in the Bioterrorist Challenge. Uh, After each player turn, do up to two actions, plus one Drive Fairy action in any order. So that's got to be what the the location sheet is for, to make sure the Bioterrorist isn't cheating, so that you get a recorded log of where he was the entire game. 
Okay, I'm going to look at the fill operative again because I don't feel like I got it. Once per turn, as an action, you may move one disease cube from the city you are in onto this roll card. So he's just collecting them. When you discover a cure, you may replace two of the needed city cards with three cubes of the cure color from this card. So, okay, what I originally read this was and was excited about is that you can replace um, card, match cards you're matching together with disease cubes. And then I reread it, and it sounded like after you've discovered a cure, um, you may replace them, which didn't make any sense. But I think it's how I originally thought it was. So it looks like you can do three of a kind plus uh, three disease cubes of the color. So as long as he's going around doing cures, with, like his ability says, it's going to be pretty nice. Um, so I'm really interested about this. Oh, of course, we've got all the little pawns. What's impressive is that we've got color distinct pawns in here. Uh, and these purple cubes are pretty cute, I'll be honest. But uh, yeah, we've got the, uh, the, I'll hold it up there. We've got the purple cure uh, there. Uh, and we've got pawns. Now uh, we've got these cute little things. There's not nearly as many of these cubes as the other ones, but the, I'm willing to bet there's different rules for the virus one. So give me just a second to look at the mechanics here. And uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, wow. So in this version, there are three different challenges that you can do that it doesn't seem like you can mix together. Uh, we noted earlier that there were purple mutation cards. Um, those are for one of the challenges, and that's the mutant strain. The red cards are uh, a different version of the epidemic card that is used for the violent strain challenge. And then, of course, there's the bioterrorist with the big uh, location sheet that is used uh, to pit your, uh, against the other players. Uh, it actually says it's not recommended for uh, five people to play. Oh, you can play five players with this version, um, officially. They, they found a way to balance the cards, uh, which I find is very interesting. Um, I'm surprised, though, that they say not to use five players with bioterrorists. Um, I think three or four is what was recommended. Being one bioterrorist and two to... Uh, Three players. Uh, I would think with four, maybe the bioterrorist shows up too many times, um, and he's too easy to capture. That, that's the only thing that I can think of. Um, and the win-lose condition is... I don't know, you still have to get rid of the disease, but the bioterrorist is, is using the fifth one to muck everything up. I think it works better if the diseases are part of the game. Uh, if the bioterrorist is just... Uh, messing with the team directly and not with the board, um, I think that might be more interesting. Like if he was in an adjacent city, or if he was able to sneak into the city and uh, that they're in, and then uh, do things that way. Like that's what I would think of. But I didn't write this. Um, I'm looking forward to playing the different challenges and uh, discovering what they really are. Just adding the new roles is going to be plenty for this game. Um, but that, that's pretty much all I got. I'm so happy about these Petri dishes. I really am. Um, it's going to be fantastic. So, and here's all the stuff that you can get with this. Um, until you see me next time, this has been an unboxing for Pandemic on the Brink. Ha! And that's game over. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go to click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.